Hello, Ken. Are you ready, Ken? Oh. <laughs> Rise and shine. <laughs> If you're rising and shining right now, you must be sleeping in the daytime and getting ready to work the evening shift. I hope there's no trees down across your driveway that might restrict you from that. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Park can tell you how to get out around yeah. them. Uh, I was just sitting here. You can tell what I had a what I had for my evening meal. One of the most peculiar looking chickens I've ever seen right there. But the cows are just delighted <laughs> for this organization. So I guess it would be up for grabs whether you eat beef, roast beef, or whether you eat chicks, chickens. And since everything else tastes like chicken, <laughs> Just might as well come to Chick-fil-A and get chicken. But now I'd like to get to the crux of what I want to talk about for just a few minutes. Now, this won't be long. I don't know the owner of Chick-fil-A. I've never met the owner. But from the moment that they arrived in Chambersburg, I have supported them. I guess there's something about when they announced that they were gonna operate a business that did not open on Sunday. I thought, I gotta see this. Because I remember when we were kids. Cheryl, do you remember when we were, can you remember back that far? I can. How far <laughs> back would that be? A little farther than years. <laughs> How far would that be? Um, a few years. I, if, if I'm guessing what you're saying, I remember when nothing was open on Sunday. <laughs> and we made sure that we got gas before Sunday in the vehicles. Um, if you had to polish your shoes, you didn't wait till Sunday morning? You, everything was done Saturday before. You prepared saturday night to be ready to get up wake up refreshed and ready to go to the house of the lord but i think they used to call it the blue law I, the, I don't know what that was about where people businesses weren't allowed to open yeah. on sunday i can't say that i know i go out every sunday for dinner most sundays it's easier for you and me both. It's just easier to go out and do that and go home and spend the rest of the day relaxing. But the whole world says this guy couldn't do that. He didn't listen to any of them, the poor man. He just went ahead and opened up his Chick-fil-A and said it's not going to run on Sunday. Yesterday I talked to you about staying firm. Staying Stand. firm in your faith. Staying firm in your relationship with the Lord. Stand firm. Paul said, stand, stand, stand shoulder to shoulder, shield to shield, dig in, dig in and stand. I remember and Charles just talked to you about it. When things were closed on Sunday so that it could be, first of all, a day of rest, and secondly, a day of worship, the other way around, whichever way you take it. And now, I'm not saying we should go back to that. I just wanna, I just wanna, and I'm not trying to promote Chick-fil-A. I'm really not. There's lots of people, places to get chicken that's just as good as this. It's a matter of having a conviction about something and standing firm on it, even if everybody else said, it'll never work, it'll never work, it'll never work. 
why, why don't you go in and read some of the things that this man here that owns Chick-fil-A, I don't want to mention any. Why don't you read some of the things that he's done, some of the things he stood for, some of the things that he has not backed down. Uh, there's been some places in America where they tried to force him. You're going to stay open Sunday whether you want. No, no, no. He said, I can, you know, I got enough money. I can just, I can just shut this thing right down. I don't have to have my Chick-fil-A in certain big cities. I'm not mentioning which state that was. He says, no, you're not going to control, control me, you know. He was standing firm. And I can't tell you how that's going to be, how important that's going to be as we come closer to the arrival of the rapture of the church, the tribulation period, the second coming of Christ with the church back here. I just can't tell you. If people don't learn to believe in something and stand strong for something, they'll fall for anything. Anyway, that's it. Hope you get it. And I think Hobby Lobby Ken has the same yep. standards. Yep. They do. That's amazing nowadays. If you check out both those men that own these companies, they're men of integrity. They're men who have uh, shared their wealth with other people who struggle, organize their charities that need help that are really doing some good in the country. There's just something that, that makes me, I, I know you have tried to encourage me to not limit my my uh, crafty shopping experience to one store, that there was more than one. But honestly, I've thought about that, and I know the reason why I keep going to Hobby Lobby. I know the reason. You hit it on it, you see yourself. I, I just admire somebody who have some integrity and some convictions and saying, this is what I believe. And it doesn't really matter whether anybody in the whole world, wide world believes it. Mm -hmm. This company doesn't belong to anybody else. It belongs to me. And this is the way it's going to be. You're going to have to somehow get strong in the Lord and have that kind of conviction. It, it doesn't need to be obnoxious. It doesn't. It just, just believe it and stand for it and live for it. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you just go to the Bible and you know find the commandments of the Lord and and begin to live them out and listen to the Holy Spirit what He's telling you and begin to live it out. And it really won't matter what anybody else says. Everybody else is not going to be standing with you in the last moment. You've got to learn to stand you and God together. And I think. It it's important that you find what the Lord's convicting you of because just standing in defiance of nobody's going to tell me what to do. Now that's not what I'm trying not, to promote. Right. I, that's not what you're saying at all. I hope not. No. Soften that up for me, honey. Cause... Right. That what you said was about you need to find your own convictions mm -hmm. what the Lord's telling you to do yeah. um, because that's not a Christian attitude either just to say no that's because you're I was, telling right. I know because you're telling me I'm not going to do it that, that's not what that's, you're saying that's not what I'm promoting No, I'm promoting if you believe the Bible says something and it says something specifically to you right Francis, this this what we're talking about goes back to the Old Testament. Well, keeping the Sabbath day holy. Mm -hmm. They had so many laws about what you could not do yeah. on the Sabbath day. Now, now we come to the New Testament era, the church age, and we have the Sabbath day. M most evangelical churches are celebrating their worship and celebrating their relationship with the Lord and with the church together on the first day of the week. 
which that was the day when Jesus rose from the dead. And when Mary, the, Mar the Marys came to the tomb and, and he arose. And from that day on, most of the church has celebrated it on the first day of the week. Quite honestly, I got no bones to pick with those who believe it should be celebrated on Saturday or Sunday. But I know one thing, the Bible is clear that we should be keeping it holy. As I sit here and talk about it, I, you know, I almost, I look at where we've come since I was a kid. <laughs> and I wonder, whew, I want, we would never thought about buying gas or, or going to, Grocery shopping. I'm 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 getting in trouble here, ain't I? <laughs> Sunday was a special day for the Lord and for resting and for family. I think what you're saying is whatever it is that the Lord's convicting you of, that we just need to be firm and not wishy washy and change from one week to the next or from one mood to the next or from one the weather generation. changes, we just need to be firm and stand. You can be friendly and still be firm. You, you can have fellowship with people who disagree with you mm -hmm. and still be firm in what, what you mm -hmm. believe, right? Absolutely. Even as married couples, you need to be able to agree to disagree we're not all the same. We're individuals, right? <laughs> what do you mean, right? <laughs> You'd like me to agree with that? <laughs> I do agree with that 100%. Show. That's funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just didn't know if that was a declaration of independence or if... <laughs> if <you're... laughs> hey, oh. that, is, that is funny, hon. Huh? But that is the truth. That is really the truth. You and I are as opposite as day is night. Our two boys are opposite. You, you know, just being the same isn't necessarily a great trait. Many, many times people hook up with somebody who... Opposites complement each other. Yeah, they do. <laughs> well... Stand, stand for the Lord and stand for what is right. Stand for truth. I guess I was just in a reflecting mode and I couldn't pass the opportunity up of thinking uh, about that. And So uh, the cows are dancing because we ate here tonight instead of uh, roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know they're dancing. I saw them on that sign over there. Did you? <laughs> Stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Okay? You got it? Got it. Okay. Bye-bye.